and welcome to another edition of Chopped Greens. I'm your host, Philip Amrine, sitting alongside a very crispy and waffleicious Luke Wright. We are live on location here in um, IHOP. We're in IHOP. I didn't know if we were supposed to be subtle about it because we're not being sponsored by IHOP or anything. I'm Which also leads us to copyright law. We have a lovely uh, speaker right above us with an ambiance of music that we own no right to. So if you hear some groovy tunes, do not, not sue us. us. It's not it's on not us. us. This is this is the ambiance, and it could be good, could be bad. Don't know. Anyways, I think. Wow. We have a lot to talk about this week. A lot's been happening lately. We have so much that we actually had to turn down some topics. We can't even it's do true. our we can't even do it's our regular true. formatted show because of how much we had to do this week. So, I think where we should start is right where our hearts are. What something that's very near and dear to both of us. Um, we need. To, <laughs> this is going to be very choppy on live yeah. location here, so bear with us if we cut in and out. But uh, ASU. Has it's it's reported right now, but we do know for a fact that um, Herm Edwards has been interviewing for the Arizona State University job. The only one interviewing for the Arizona State University job. There was rumors mulling around that Kevin Sumlin might be in line. I know that he turned down the job six years ago when Todd Graham, the coach who's been fired this past week. Uh, was hired in six years ago, but then he turned it down. So that's something that, again, reportedly did not endear him to the ASU fan base. So even though he's available and he's my personal, I would I would love to have him as an ASU fan. Um, that's probably a negative, a big negative for him. Um, but back to more pertinent business, Herm Edwards. Let's. How do you feel, Luke, right about Herm Edwards reportedly being the number one candidate and? And in, in some reports even saying that he's already signed a deal that all it needs is uh, Michael Crow's signature and they've got a deal. This might literally be the worst coaching hire of all time across all sports, professional, collegiate, club, YMCA. FIFA, my manager, all, manage my own league. All of it, all of it. This might be <laughs> the absolute worst possible hire I've ever seen. And why is that? Why is it so bad? For two reasons. One, Herm Edwards wasn't even a good coach in the NFL. He has no experience coaching in college, so I don't know why. That's not he's true. Had. That's not true. He don't has be no disingenuous head now, Luke. Coaching experience in college. He was a defensive backs coach back in the late '80s for San Jose State. Um, was also, that when Bear Bryant was still running Alabama? Maybe. <laughs> actually, I said that in a joke. That actually, it might be. That might be true. But not, not only that, but also, I can't imagine Herm Edwards is really going to be that cheap. But even if he is, uh, Ray Anderson set a lot of lofty goals for this ASU football program heading forward. For those of you who don't know, here are, here are some of the highlights of them. ASU needs to be ranked top 15 nationally every year. Every year. They need to be Pac-12 top three every year. And they need to have players drafted into the NFL every year. Now, he wants to do this paying them middle of the road with aggressively fair benefits. Or bonuses, I should say. Mm -hmm. So, even with all that, he decided that the best case hire was Herm Edwards, who, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Herm and Ray have been friends for literally decades, and I believe Herm Edwards was actually a client of Ray Anderson back when Anderson was a, uh, an agent in the NFL. I'm not 100% on that one, but I think so, or he worked closely with each other. So really, this entire hire just reeks of, I'm going to hire my best friend. So let me tell you, let me tell you a couple things. One, ASU... Okay, let's even go back. It's okay, it's great to have expectations in life. It's great to expect something more out of yourself than maybe what's realistic. Because in failing in some of those lofty goals, you'll settle on greatness. You know, you'll you'll fail at a lower level, but that's still successful. I'm not necessarily even upset about what he says that he expects, but to but to have when you initially hired Todd Graham six years ago. 
the hire, if I remember correctly, the tenor of which Todd Graham's hiring was, we need to make sure that, and best case scenario, he does so well that a bigger school will nab him from us. That's what. That's the most that we as ASU. That's our lot in life. Unfortunately, that's what it is. Unless we somehow get a Washington head coach where they just happen to like it at ASU and they want to stay there, Stanford, um, uh, David Shaw. That's that's kind of the case going on there. Get some sort of ASU alum who becomes a huge. Yes, head coach think of John chess. Harbaugh, Michigan man. That's yep. why he's there. That's our best case scenario in life. Um, Arizona State is not a top ten top. 20, I mean... They're not even top 25. I, they're not a top 25 job. Um, so really it, it, so when you when you set yourself to say, you know, Todd Graham... I don't even know that I loved Todd Graham, but he, had, he just got fired after a winning season, for one. He had a couple... He had a good win against Arizona. Yep. He had a couple of good noteworthy wins. He didn't have a lot of unacceptable losses. Um... And last year's U of A was, that was very pretty bad. unacceptable. Okay, so there we go. That, but then that was last year. When you when you go forward from that year and progress to this year, I, I think you need to forgive it. But let's even go beyond that to Herm Edwards. He's it. For me, it just feels like an, a, a, you're trying to fit a square peg into a circle circular hole where it just doesn't fit. He, to me, feels like an old-school guy. That's how he comes off as his personality or his persona on ESPN. And as much as he's like that nice grandpa-father type, to me, it's it's what's new, what's next. And he is not what's new, what's next. He's what's last year and come, you know, headline, headline, read all about it. It's more last decade. He has not coached since 2008. And for me, it's, it just feels... It, I think... In searching for greatness, we settled for what we are familiar with. And that's just, that's awful. Did, did we even settle for what we're familiar with? To be honest, I think settling for what we're familiar with would be a Kevin Sumlin. Or maybe you go out and try to pick off um, somebody else who's currently just like, just outside, like a Greg Shiano. Instead, we settled for the AD's best friend. And I really wish that we, if we were going to go a, an alternative route, where we did not have a set, a set bona fide star head coach. Um, you know, you're you're bringing Urban Meyer out of retirement. You're bringing Chip Kelly. You, I mean, you just go for a big name hire. If we were going to go for a big name hire, Less I would miles. rather. Yeah, Les Miles. I, there's He's a available. lot of there's a lot of viable candidates for that job that I think. Even, you know, quote-unquote retreads that have success on their resume, if you're not going to go there and you're going to go out of the out of the realm of possibility, why don't we go young? Why don't we try and, try and hit on a guy who's up and coming as opposed to just a stab in the dark, which is just makes no sense. This has failure written all over. And I'll be the first guy in line to say that this, that this works. If it does, should it work? I just don't see it. I just don't see it whatsoever. So Neither do I. I think the biggest problem is, and I've been telling people this already, if this fails, um, this is not just a Herm Edwards loses his job after a couple years of failure. This is a Herm Edwards and Ray Anderson lose their job after what was clearly just nepotism. So I just, I don't see this working. I don't think it'll work. I have no reason to think it'll work. There's literally nothing about this that makes sense to me as an ASU fan, as an ASU student, as just a person who watches college football. This just this doesn't make any sense. Somebody who watches college football, that's an interesting way because we even discussed ASU itself should have realistic realistic expectations. Top 25, a job it's not. We've, we've, we've said that. Um, but speaking about the top 25, and even let's go even further, the college football rankings have come out. Um, the top six, of course, number one, Clemson. Number two, Auburn, coming off of that hellacious uh, win over Alabama. Number uh, three is Oklahoma. Boomer Sooner. <laughs> and number four, that's right, was Gary the Texas? Yep. Okay, that's right. I couldn't remember which side. And number four is uh, Wisconsin with Outside of it, uh, just just outside Alabama at eleven and one, and uh, Georgia at eleven and one as well. Now, a couple things we know here: 
Auburn and Georgia are set to met, meet in their SEC uh, conference title game. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma's set to meet uh, TCU for their conference game. Yep. Clemson, Miami are supposed are going to meet, and that feels very much like a win in your end kind of uh, game because that that will give validation to Miami or verify Clemson's status as the top dog. And Wisconsin just needs to take out Ohio State. No big deal right there. <laughs> Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. We're looking at a playoff situation where Alabama doesn't make it. It's very viable. I, no, I, I, not only do I think it's viable, I think it's likely. Oh, it's a, I, I would put that as the most likely outcome. Um, because I think that even Georgia winning, they yeah. took complete. I, there's no doubt in my mind that they leapfrog um, Alabama the, the only as the number six seed into the top four. So I work at FanRag Sports, as you know, and as uh, I'm letting the audience know now, uh, the only we spent a good 10, 15 minutes the Sunday after this last uh, college football round. And we went over every possible scenario we could think of. And the only one we could come up with that we thought we could confidently say Alabama gets in is if Oklahoma loses. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. That's the only way we could see them even sneaking in. Because if whoever wins the ACC is going to get in, whether that be Clemson or Miami, whoever wins the SEC will get in, whether it be Auburn or Georgia. So those are guaranteed. Those those we, we can we, safely assume that yes. it doesn't. Maybe the ranking will be shuffled around, but we know that they'll be yeah. in there should they, whoever wins. If Wisconsin wins the Big Ten, there's you, you no, have to give it to no them. way you you kick them out. Kick them out. And we thought even if Ohio State won the Big Ten, it was possible they would get it. Conference championship, they knocked off the undefeated team. They do have some quality wins on the year, even if they have two losses as well. Um, and then also, um, Oklahoma was the weak link because the person they play is TCU. So not only would that be one of the worst losses of the bunch, it's a loss against a team that really doesn't have a shot making into the playoff. Right. So really for us, and if Alabama gets kicked out, uh, we might see eight teams next year. Yeah, for me, let, let, let's just go off of Alabama because that's the top brand in, in college football, so it has been. Ever since the inception of the college football uh, playoffs, mm-hmm. they've, been, um, they've been in, whether it different seedings each and every time, uh, but they definitely squeeze, squeeze and uh, get in there, and they always seem to be in the championship game and then versus Clemson, so it's been very South-dominant. Um, this year, they have no validity or dare I say right to be in the playoffs this year. They, really they have they're yeah, they only have one loss, but their one loss was their only quality game. Now I get it; they're injured. That they have a lot of they they're even down a couple on their linebacker spots. They're down too deep. They not only lost their starters, but they lost their backups, and they're having to start true redshirt freshmen. I get that. That's a that's a true qualm, and it and it makes them weaker. But Regardless of that, they put themselves in this position with how they scheduled. And I get it. When they started out the year against Florida State, Florida State was better than what they ended up being because they lost. Uh, Florida State lost their quarterback, thus derailing most of their season, uh, leaving them in a, in a bit of a smoke and mirrors trying to get to, to respectability. Here's Alabama's schedule. Okay, read it to me. Florida State. Florida State. We'll give them credit for that. At the time, it was a great win. Yes. Um, Fresno State. Who is actually, apparently, I did not know this, uh, ranked 25th. Or at least they were at the time. I'm not sure if these rankings get updated as the weeks right, go Right, right, right. Uh, Colorado State. A game in which they only won 41-23. Which, while well, yes, that's a dominant win for Alabama against Colorado State, not a dominant win. Uh, Vanderbilt. Mississippi. Texas A&M. Arkansas. Tennessee. LSU, which has been up and down all year. That's supposedly their second best win. Mississippi State, which they only won by one touchdown. Mercer, because they always have that very random uh, non-conference in the middle of their schedule as a tune-up game. Right. And then they lost to Auburn by two possessions. I... This is one of the least... This is the whole point of Alabama. What they do, what they try to create is this aura of invincibility. Entitlement, even. Yeah. 
because they smash a bunch of weak little non-conference and weak SEC teams because the SEC is really not a good conference for football outside of the top four. No, you know what, Luke? This, this isn't even that. What this is is that they've been playing with fire all year, that they, they, they set themselves up to be in the best position to be in the college. That when they hit the college football playoffs, they, they storm through because they're healthier, they're better rested, they're in better position to lead the pack and drag everybody around. It's it's almost like resting your starters in the last week when you're when in the NFL when you have when you've already sealed off home field advantage throughout the playoffs. But they what they did is that they got caught. Yep. That when they lost and they got caught, they they you can't foretell of injuries and so when they finally found out that Auburn was their one game of the year that would either make or break them, that's their only that's their only quality game. That's the only quality game that they had. So when you lose that, you have no right to say, hey, I should still be in. You have no right to say, we're only one loss. But you don't have a right to say that any of your 11 wins are worth a poop when your one loss was the only one that mattered. Especially because that one loss wasn't even a conference game. They, they didn't even schedule out of conference very well. So I... what? <laughs> Gary, you are the woke. <laughs> The the what? The what? Worst of all time. Oh, okay. It's like goat, but with a W. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Just reading some of our Facebook live comments right now. <laughs> Gary Boucher getting in on the conversation. So, for me, I I really have no problem with how it is. I think Wisconsin is going to be soon be rectified, and I I realize that. Ohio State will have two losses and will have a stronger case than Alabama, but in no way, shape, or form should Alabama have any recourse and no road through which that they get into college football playoffs outside, outside, and I will give them this. If Oklahoma loses and Clemson loses, that's the only way that they get in because everybody will have moved and shifted so much that somehow Alabama made it. And even then, I'm still not sure that... a, a a Georgia team and maybe uh, yeah. I, there, there are some other teams that have better losses mm-hmm. and better wins than well, Alabama. And I'll be honest, one of the things that bothers me is how the committee is seeding, them, seeding the top four. I don't know. I get it. Wisconsin has not played a tough schedule at all. But they're undefeated heading into their conference title. They should probably not be the one barely squeaking in. Clemson. Look at that schedule, though. I know I get it. But st- uh, here's, it's the same. Here's, it's the exact same why, case though. as Alabama. Just they haven't met their true game. Their true game is coming up in but, Ohio State. But here, well, Alabama gets the benefit of the doubt, though. Alabama, if they're undefeated, they're one. Or yeah, they're one. Well, but look at that precedent, though. I mean, it, it shows you that if you're undefeated going in, you at least ensure yourself uh, a place in the playoffs, no. much like the yes. NFL. But here's where here's, if you win your division, here's you're why in. I don't like. Wisconsin being four, but with while still being undefeated. Okay. Clemson has a loss, a bad loss to a bad oh, Syracuse, team. Yeah. Syracuse. Oklahoma has a decent loss. Iowa State's been playing very well. It was by one touchdown. It was at home, but Iowa State, the whole state of Iowa this year has just been a playoff killer. <laughs> um, but, and so I can that Oklahoma maybe I'm also a little bit of a homer, so I feel like I do like Oklahoma. I do I do want to see them in, even though they and, seem to get stomped every time they get in any who, meaningful and game. Auburn but. two losses. And Those are some impressive losses, though. They are, but you're telling me you can't put the two loss team four and the undefeated team two or three. You're telling me. Undefeated was who? Who's Clemson beat so Auburn. far? Clemson that, beat Auburn. The Clemson right? beat Auburn, and that's their most okay. impressive win. Um, outside of that, they're going to be meeting Miami, so there's a little bit of uh, forward thinking that yeah. that's where they'll end up. Because should they get in, those will be the most impressive wins yeah. for all the playoff teams outside of maybe Wisconsin having one impressive win. And Auburn, Auburn, I'd say has the best looking wins. Thus far, Clemson oh, will be. Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma beat Ohio State at Ohio State. Well, two teams have done that thus far. It might be three. Yeah, and the other. Well, not te- well. The third and, one. Would, and yeah. who was the other team? Uh, Penn State, with yes. arguably the greatest uh, college football player outside of Baker Mayfield. Yeah, but he has. He's been really having a. L- he late, has uh, not. That offensive line is just atrocious. It is. It pains me to see 
uh, Barkley get traded that way. So you talked. Okay, so you talked about Baker Mayfield, and it's more Heisman winner. <laughs> Soon to be. I'll, I'll give him that title. That He hasn't Heisman. earned it yet, but he will be. Sure last. But the Heisman Trophy of the NFL is the MVP of the league. Yep. Now, we, now, I know it's not exactly midseason right now, but in the NFL. Pass. But most people, most people generally say Thanksgiving is the true determination factor of a good barometer. If, if you're above 500 there, you're, how you go from here on out will determine your, your streak into the playoffs, how you'll look. Or, uh, you know, either way. You're either selling, you're buying. This is like a very meaningful yep. barometer time. So I thought this would be the best time for us to go over our MVP of the league. You, sir, have chosen for the NFL. The MVP would be? Carson Wentz. Okay. Uh, with what, the Eagles having one loss so far, Wentz himself is playing great. He's leading the, the d- most dominant team, I think, in the NFL from start to finish. I can understand. There's always going to be those people who say, well, it should be Tom Brady. And, I mean, they're probably not wrong, but I'm willing to give it to Wentz this year for what he's been doing. And uh, and doing it in just a second year, too. It's very impressive. So Carson Wentz would be my MVP. And Brady is a close second, but I got to go Wentz. Okay, so I, I know that it's... For me, my biggest problem for the NFL MVP, and with a lot of MVPs, is that it's largely become a top team, best player on best team debate. And for me, that's not always my barometer. My barometer is, if you were to take out this player, how bad would they be? Or how dependent are they on this player? When's the last time the MVP was the best player on the best team? Pretty much every year. Name once for any sport. Michael Jordan. That was 20 years ago. I mean, we go back. LeBron and James. Also, I think we can. Kevin agree. Durant. I get your naming five years ago. But you just asked for examples. Yeah, you said every year. Every I'm example, saying specifically for the uh, NFL. You just listed basketball players. Okay, so we go to the <laughs> NFL. I mean, it's it's Peyton Manning. It's Tom Brady. It's a, it's along those lines, who and was, it's also who was the MVP last year. Who was the MVP? It wasn't Cam Newton. That was the year before last year. It was Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. And he they had home field advantage throughout the playoffs, so they were the number one seed in the NFC. My point being is that I don't disagree with Carson Wentz. I do have a man crush on Carson Wentz, as uh, some may be able to attest uh, to. I, I do like Carson Wentz, and I get why he's the front runner right now. But personally, my, my number one MVP candidate right now isn't even Tom Brady. It's Russell Wilson. Now, I know that might sound crazy. It, it is crazy. It is crazy. But he he has a winning team. They're in the playoffs. They have no stalwart defense that he used to have to rely on. They have no run game. Russell Wilson accounts for 86% of his team's offense. That's 86%. Good. That's not good? Not good for the team. Oh, no, no, no. That's not good for the team. But I would I would argue that when you see him in these standalone games that, that a lot of the times he has, in those Monday night games that he's had to impress, in a loss he looks extremely impressive as much as he does in a win. They, that team is all Russell Wilson or bust. And should Russell Wilson go down, that team is now done. And because they've lost Richard Sherman. They've lost... Cam Chancellor, I think, is still up in the air. We don't know. I know that neck injury was supposed to be season injury, oh, season right ending, but we don't. I, this, I think they're still determining this it. This late in the year, I think it's safe to say it's. <clears throat> Earl Thomas has been in and out of that lineup. Uh, the only stalwart on that defense is Bobby Wagner, who has a lot of praise, but that's just one person. Uh, uh, they, they, for whatever reason, cut uh, Dwight Freeney. I don't know why they did. Um, on offense, Doug Baldwin has a lot of up-and-down production. Russell Wilson has no running game to rely on. They've been gonna, going through that running back committee. almost seems like a, an underwhelming approach to, to the word. It's an insult to the, to the word on how bad those running backs have been. You just ask any fantasy football owner who drafted Eddie Lacy in their sixth round. Wow, well, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, that was. That was, and I, I feel bad. I should have drafted Russell Wilson because he's... I don't think he was available in the sixth round. He might not have been. But the point is, the point is, Russell Wilson, I'd argue that you take off Carson Wentz, there's a chance that they're good because that defense is fantastic. You take off Tom Brady... That's probably my that's probably my second runner because he he's kind of make he's making that whole system go for me, but Russell Wilson Russell Wilson the, the mere fact of the I of that he is the bread and bones and butter of that entire offense 
and dare I say team in the fact that he's fulfilling the the Zeke Elliott role of trying to milk the clock and get his defense on the on the field as little and minimal amount of time as possible is utterly impressive. He makes ma- magical plays that is is just a just a tick, just a just just a small amount lower than Aaron Rodgers. For me, I'd I mean, say it's Russell Wilson. It's it's a tick, like a tic tac. Mm. Point is Russell Wilson MVP. I know he won't win it. Doesn't mean that he shouldn't. Mm, he shouldn't. Uh, that's okay. But you know who should win Coach of the Year? Doug Peterson. <laughs> so you're just Eagles heavy this year. Do you yeah. have like an Eagles visor? Like one of those? Don't they have no, those crazy I'm, Eagles visors? I'm on? actually very neutral on Eagles. You know, what? I do like the Eagles. I, again, I have like a personal favoritism towards the Eagles, but in reality. Who have they beat that's been that impressive? They beat the Broncos, and that looked impressive at the time. That's kind of mellowed out. They beat the Cowboys, looked impressive at the time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna punish them for uh, being given a schedule that they had literally no control over. The one thing that you can say, the one rebuttal, is that they've destroyed the teams that they needed to destroy. They're not the Steelers who play down or up to their competition every single week, and it's just, it's lukewarm. Pardon the pun of it's which the best team? Kind of warm. That's. that's Philip Rivers is the best kind of quarterback. No. Okay, the point is, uh, the Eagles as a whole have been solid. And now they get into the tough part of their schedule where they face the Seahawks, the Falcons, and um, some other team. And I can't remember, forgive me for, for the misinformation there. Three, but, no. Th- yeah. <laughs> three, no. We will see the true version. I mean, the one, the one, three. the one loss that they have was to an impressive-looking Chiefs that, again, does not look that great right now. At the time, though. At the time, it the was... The Chiefs were beating everyone. I know. The Chiefs at the time, it was good. It hasn't turned out to be as uh, a solid a loss, as it were, as it was at the time. Um, for me, as you might say Doug Peterson is the best coach. I'd say that that's more on Carson Wentz than the coach. I would have to say, bar none, Sean McVay. Sean McVay of the Rams has showcased why the L.A. Rams last year was just such a joke. They've stockpiled so much talent on that team, and for Jeff Fisher and that offensive staff that he put together, that he completely just left the offense to to a first-time offensive coordinator, was such an an atrocity of of epic proportions that this year it's. I think he may be unofficially retired from ever coaching again. You get him out of out of any position outside of maybe a defensive. I, I think he was unofficially retired the moment he got fired. This is this is cementing it. This is he's, this is pouring it in, saying, you know he, what, that casket isn't buried the enough. Worst coach I'm in so NFL sorry. But the worst coach in NFL. Look at his look at his record. I think it's worse than I think it's better than Herm Edwards. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going in full circle now. Yeah. Point is, uh, no, I I don't think you're wrong for saying Sean McVay. I think that was a a very good solid choice. Um, He's playing in a tougher division. That was I an think. impressive Saints win. Yeah, it's, it was very impressive. I think the Rams are one of the few contenders in the NFC who could actually win a Super Bowl. He's uh, turned Goff around, and who and Goff's actually part of my Give Me Five later today. A little oh. foreshadowing there, but uh, I think they call that a tease in the business. Yeah, a little bit, but um, I don't. I don't think Sean McVay is a bad answer. I don't think it's a wrong answer. Uh, I just. I personally like what Doug Peterson's been able to do so far with that team, and I'm interested to see uh, how he can keep it up. Fair enough. I mean, the one uh, another downside to picking either Sean McVay or Doug Peterson is that I don't feel that they fully encompass the entire uh, title of head coach in that they both hand off their defenses to their defensive coordinators. I think Jim Schwartz has a a heavy hand in how that defense is rolled, and and Sean McVay... <laughs> if you wa- if you watch the games, he completely goes off to his little cooler, sits on there, draws a plays on the on the little yeah. mic mic. That's no, nice no job. Cool. He's, he's he didn't get hired there. To no, help no, he the, did not. He, he hands it off to Wade Phillips, and which uh, is what you should do. That's Wade, that's a sign of being a good head coach. You hired the right people but you for the areas you didn't know yourself, and you trust them to make the decisions. But I'm saying that that's something that I feel even even though Bill Belichick's butter is breaded. Breaded. Bill Be- Bill Belichick's bread is buttered on defense. That's how he how he came up through the system as a defensive coach. That's what he's known for. He was for. actually special teams. I mean, on the Giants Super Bowl winning team, he was a defensive defensive coordinator. He was, I believe, special teams right before he got promoted to head coach. 
regardless. Sean Payton, also special teams. Uh, the John Harbaugh. Why why are special teams coaches the best coaches in the league? I don't know. Last year for the Rams, the interim head coach was the special teams head coach. Special teams that coaches are like a, actually the that best That sounds like coaches. a good controversy to talk about later. Uh, circling back to Sean McVay, doesn't fully encapsulate that head coach for me uh, as far as... I, I think he'll he'll evolve into it, but as of right now, that would be the, the biggest tarnish on his head coaching career, as, as little as it is. I, I would say that that's the one nitpicky comment I have to make about it. Uh, really fast, I just, I just we needed to get into this because we're both Denver Broncos fans. We both have had a horrible, pukastic season. I'm done believing in them. They're done. The, the playoffs, they're not officially eliminated. They're gone. Uh, but I, I gotta say, let's let's. Akib Talib and Michael Crabtree both got suspended two games. It's gotten reduced to one game. Which I knew it was gonna. Yeah, that's that's the standard. Is that they always give it double so that way when it gets reduced, that's the real punishment that they wanted in the first place. Yeah. But it's hilarious to me. Can we just set the rules right now? Can we, Luke, man to man. Can we just set the rules that the man who wins uh, is not the man who takes off his helmet to go to fight? It's the man who, who, who wears the helmet that's supposed to protect them from concussions and, and gets swung on. Not only did Michael Crabtree try to punch somebody with the helmet, he took off his helmet to allow himself to get punched. And for that alone, he should be out the rest of the year. And you know what else gives a keep to lead the W? In the ultimate shutdown corner move of all time, he got the other yeah. wide receiver off he, the field. He did his job. He did his job. He did he, his job. He and shut he him got down. The rest of the day off. I would know. I played against him in fantasy this week. He got zero zero receptions, zero yards. Yes, yeah. it was great. Now Akeem Talib did his job. He's going to sit out this next week. But let's be honest, he's kind of been mentally sitting out this this year. But but I just I just for me the number one rule in going to a fight in the football in in, in the Make NFL. Make sure your helmet's on. Keep your helmet on. That's a. I mean, to be fair, Michael Crabtree did did deck him a little bit. He got he got no, his fist through. But in, in wearing a helmet that's supposed to keep you from getting concussions, I don't think your fist is going to win that battle. So we will move on now to give me five. Right after this break for our podcast listeners. Excuse me. Right after this break for our podcast listeners. Right after this short little clicking break for our Facebook Live audience. Hello and welcome back to uh, Gimme 5 Chopped Greens. We are going to go to the Gimme 5 section of our show where, Luke, I got five questions for you, you got five questions for me. We don't know what they are, but we will answer them honestly. Would you care to go first this week, Luke? Sure, I'll go, I'll go first. This Fantastic. Week. Let's pull it up. Okay, so my first question, as you and um, the vi- viewers and listeners I'm sure have heard by now, Eli Manning is losing his consecutive start streak yes. of at, at 210, I think. Yes. It's up there. He, so just, up passed, there. he just passed his brother at 209. Good job. Got yeah, one more okay. thing. He was better at paid. One more. Um, but I don't have a problem with the concept of sitting uh, who someone who's arguably the greatest Giants quarterback of all time. Actually, I won't even say arguably. He is. Yeah, who's but he, his, his partially is because there's not a lot of competition. Phil Sims. Yeah, Phil Sims. <laughs> like that's it. Uh, Kurt Warner for half a year. But um, the way I don't like I said, I don't have a problem with him being sat. It was how he was sat. Being unceremoniously benched more than halfway through a season in which you know you're not making the playoffs for Geno Smith. Gino. Former West Virginia great Geno Smith. Not even a young prospect who you think could develop into something more if you give him experience. Just Geno Smith. That w- and that was the the most pathetic thing that I have ever seen. As in if my New York life. had not seen Geno Smith intimately with so, the Jets. It it was so bad that even the owner John Mara Mara had to come out and say, "Yeah, we didn't handle this right." So my and he was even out of the country when they did this, and he wasn't even in person to tell Eli Manning, yeah. who he's made t- millions upon near billions of money off of the backup. So my question to you is, have you seen any quarterback change go as badly or as pathetically as this one? <sighs> the only real one, I don't, I don't know if it's pathetic, but uh, the Kurt Warner to, to his backup, I think it was Bolger, 
that was pretty bad because it, it, it was almost a... Kurt Warner has had some really bad exits. I mean, outside of the Cardinals exit, which was not bad. I think he just left after the Saints championship game that he lost. Uh, he left both the Rams to Mark Bolger, which in the way that he started, he, he entered the game because of an injury, and he left because of an injury, and then Mark Bolger took over, and they just rode the hot hand to a loss. And then in the Giants, they were they were done before even half a season, so they just let Eli Manning take over the reins, and they were, they were in a very much Bills playoff push and then just gave up half the season later, so Kurt Warning had that, that tarnish on his uh, resume. So I would say Kurt Warner's had is pretty uh, pretty heady in this department. He he knows the direction, and when he even came out and said uh, this is a this is not how you do it. I mean that's bad. that's that's really bad. He, bad. He's an expert in that. All right. Uh, so Luke, uh, as is uh, become a regular for us, I want to give you five separate games in the NFL this week. I'm not be- I've not been doing. Great. You, you started out great. Yeah, I started out. You great. started out fantastic. I think you went four and one. Yeah. Guessing correctly the line for each coming upcoming game and having to get within one point of the actual line, and then this next couple of weeks you just you just dipped. Uh, it went you just, downhill you, fast. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one point. You get yep. one point yep. here either way, and I'm gonna give you the the game. You tell me what the actual line is, and uh, it's five games that I choose. Here we go. The Denver Broncos and Miami Dolphins. Oh my. At Miami? At Miami. I gotta go... And I did not pick the easy games, that's for sure. Miami... Minus three? Completely wrong. The Broncos minus one. Really? Yes. Do they... That's that is a that is a game of ineptitude though. It's it's who's gonna I, who's gonna I, lose I, that game more than who's gonna I, win it. I guess. Okay. All right, so that's one wrong. Here we go. Next one. Chiefs at Jets. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how much recency bias affects Vegas. Yeah, is the thing. We got the so, Chiefs. I believe on us. Are we on a six-game losing streak? I don't know. I, don't I think we're on five, maybe. I don't even think we're at five. I think we're at like three or four. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at it, but but uh, I'd have to say Jets automatically get the three points for being. That's home. correct. The Chiefs are still. I'll go Chiefs minus three. Right in there. I'm surprised you went all the way there. Chiefs minus three and a half. Right in there. One so and you're one, folks. One, one and one. That's one. all you can ask for in the NFL. College basketball. All right. Lions at Ravens. Oh. That's- <laughs> That's dirty. First of all, what are the Ravens? Yeah. What are they? <laughs> Which week you want to go with? <laughs> the uh, first three games where they had a dominant defense, the next three where they just had a putrid offense, and then the last couple weeks where it's been 50 50. At, at FanRag, I work Monday nights, I work uh, social media, and every Monday night I have to watch the game. They have been so bad this year. <laughs> so bad. That's, Houston, Baltimore was the last one. It was painful. Yeah. Um, so who is it again? It's Lions, Lions at Ravens. I'll go Lions minus two and a half. Completely wrong side of it. Ravens minus three. So what? they stuck with the standard. Oh my god. Stuck with the standard. All right, Browns. Browns at Chargers. Chargers minus eight and a half. No. I didn't say anything. I just went Chargers to Chargers minus nine. Didn't help you. Chargers minus fourteen. Damn it! <laughs> I knew it was gonna be. Yeah, more it's, than a that. it's a big number. It's a big number. I didn't know. Uh, damn, I Although to be fair, this was before the Casey Hayward leaving, which I don't know. If Casey Hayward, the corner star cornerback for the Chargers from out of Vanderbilt. Uh, <laughs> very random college to throw out there, but okay. Uh, in, a, in a very serious and somber news, his brother died in a car crash, oh. so he he had to leave. For his practice, and they were like, "We don't, we don't know if he'll come back for the for the game." And yeah. that, to be fair, I mean, if the Browns, I I think you can take a bye week. So, hopefully, everything's all right. Sorry about the loss of his brother. Um, R.I.P. Yes. Uh, finally, hoping for some respectability here. You're now three and two in the wrong direction. Three and one. You're open for three and two. Eagles, the Eagles at Seahawks. So the matchup of the birds. No, I did not choose the easy ones. Philly minus three? I don't know how much Vegas likes Seahawks. 
Eagles minus five and a half. Wow. Yep. They have no respect. No respect. For the Seahawks. <laughs> the Seah- it's Russell Wilson. That's None. all they have. That's None. all they have. Although CenturyLink used to be a, a field of horrors for other people. All right, your turn, sir. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit about our biases this uh, this week's podcast. We talked about the uh, Arizona State Sun Devils. We alumni and hopefully alumni <laughs> starting in the spring, knock on wood. And then we also talked about our Denver Broncos. And um, for the most Very part, sad. whenever you bring up the conversation of who your, who your teams are, especially when you work in the sports uh, industry, yeah. yep, you always get called, you know, a homer, and people always think you're, you're trying to build your team up and whatnot. And it, where I work at FanRagSports.com, uh, we have two very much polar opposites of this. Okay. We have one guy who's a huge Chiefs fan, Ooh. fully expects the Chiefs to lose every single game by 50 points every week. It is insane. <laughs> Even during the streak. Even during the streak. It, it is insane how much he hates his own team. Okay. And then we have a Patriots fan, two very obnoxious fan bases, <laughs> who is convinced that Patriots should be 20-0 and 0 in a... 18 game season. That's a very entitled fan base. Yeah. So, uh, my question to you is when you discuss, let me, I want to try to phrase this right. Is right. Phrase it? Okay. Very specific. When you are discussing your teams, how much do you think your bias affects it? I, I think it does affect it, but it's, it's in a weird way. I'm aware that I'm biased. So in, in a weird way, it's be, I become more critical upon my own team than I do any other team. Uh, I, I go more harshly on the Broncos than I would, say, the Lions being uh, a sludgefest of ineptitude for the, for the entire franchise's run of, of being around. Uh, I'd say that it's, it's extremely frustrating to see John Elway find just quarterback after quarterback after quarterback who's unable to lead this team to anything respectable. Uh, So I find it to be, not that I expect them to lose every game, I just find myself to be more of a realist and that I go more harshly on them whenever they do lose or whenever they make a bad mistake. I've always find it kind of varies week to week for me. Like, I'll freely admit there are times, you know, bias gets in the way. I think, like, when they play the Patriots, like, Brady historically has not been great. Uh, against Denver teams. Statistically, he hasn't been terrible, but Even, he, up until this year, he had a losing... Up until last year, he had a losing record against the Broncos in general. Um, and up until this year, he had a losing record in Denver. Uh, yeah. So... Even you saying Tom Brady at the Broncos, it made me clench just a little bit. I was like, ooh. But, like, that kind of just makes me... You know, there are times like that where I get a little more hopeful than I should be. Then they get blown out by 50 or 40 or 30 or what, however many it was. But then there are other times where it's kind of like, it doesn't really affect me at all. It's just kind of like, yeah, that's probably what should happen. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, uh, taking a sideways turn to more seriousness, uh, Matt Lauer was fired this morning over allegations that he had sexually harassed a female NBC employee during the Sochi Olympics. Since the allegations have leaked, the reaction has been swift and aggressive. Uh, Now the gory details are trickling out via multiple media sources. Uh, Allegations such as Lauer had to switch like a button underneath his office desk that allowed him to lock the door without getting up, allowing him to make inappropriate advances on female staffers without worrying about being walked in on. His office was also located in a uh, quote-unquote secluded area. Uh, Next one is, during one such encounter, he allegedly exposed himself to a female employee and lectured her when she refused to engage. Uh, Another one, another female staffer said he gave her a sex toy along with a note detailing how he wanted to use it on her. None of the women wanted to speak on record for fear of professional reprisals. And uh, last one, he also reportedly uh, made comments about employees' sexual prowess in reference to how they did their jobs. Luke, I want to know if Matt Lauer is done professionally speaking, Um, meaning will he ever have another anchor job? I'll be honest with you, I didn't even realize he had an anchor job right now. Well, he's with today, you know. Uh, he was. Well, he, uh, he was I mean, yesterday it, on today. It was a... It, I, I don't think he will. 
Matt Lauer was not a big enough name, in my opinion, to be able to, especially with how, like, he had a switch that locked the door. That's, like, pre that's pretty damning. Those are all, like, that's just, it's all, just dumb. Right. Also, I saw a video of, uh, TMZ just released a video showing him looking as the cameras were still rolling. He didn't know that they were still going on, and I believe it Forgive me if I'm wrong, but in 2006, somewhere around there, Katie Couric was on set, and he was looking at her, and he said, that's a nice sweater, Katie. No, continue to bend over. It's a nice look for you. Something along the lines. And when you just state that out, it, it might, you might be able to say, you know, that was a joke, but when you watch the video, it's terrible. It, it does not look good. Um, I, mean, I, I, I will say this. On like November 21st, the New York Times they uh, they wrote an article listing 34 men in high-profile positions who had uh, sexual allegations brought against them. That's November 21st, Luke. We're like we're we aren't even past that, and we are we are just it almost seems daily that that we're finding new people come out and have sexual allegations posed against them. I'm almost worried about that now. It's gone to the point where. Some men are going to be swept under the rug to where there's just so many that it's going to get lost in the, yeah, in the for shuffle. Yeah, Matt Lauer, there's like, there's like a very me, smaller me, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck had, had a sexual allegation. I didn't even realize that, and he had to apologize about it. Did you know about Ben Affleck? Wasn't that like decades ago? Like, didn't he, like, no, like, wasn't that already out decades ago? And then George H.W. Bush, that one kind of seemed to be sweeped under the rug. Yeah, I didn't hear about that one. You didn't hear about George H.W. No. Bush? Look that one up. That one's pretty bad. I love how too. shocked you are after you just said like it's shocked. You didn't hear about this one I just said was swept under the rug. But I'm I'm serious. It no. was it was. Each one is a case, and maybe some of them are are unduly you know are are doled out and uh, not responsibly reported. But yeah. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and I, I really I think that this is the year that that that's going to uh, be a prevalent issue. And I next year. Like I hope rolling it, over into next year. I hope it doesn't carry over like that. That it'll will be cleansed of it for something. But um, hopefully, there's a good support system for for everybody having to deal with it. That's um, that's a victim. Your turn, sir. Well, going the complete opposite <laughs> of serious. yeah. Let's bring it a little lighter now. Yeah, here's a little. Have you seen Lane Kiffin's uh, picture? In reference to his old <laughs> university, uh, Tennessee, where he used to coach very, very long time. You mean Mr. Uh, I believe this team still deserves to be in the playoffs, Nick Saban himself? What? Because he, he after, immediately after the Auburn loss, he's, he said, I, I, I don't no, know. No, not that one. Oh, who? Have you seen the Tennessee one? No, I have not. Okay, that's, what, that's where I oh, was going. There we go. That one will also factor into it, but this is the one I'm specifically talking about. It is a picture in Facebook Live. Don't worry, I got you back. And it is a picture of uh, Kim Jong Un. I don't know how well you'll be. Oh, it's a little too bright there. But uh, it says Kim Jong Un has turned down the Tennessee job. And he's he's photoshopped into a, a t Tennessee Volunteers sweater. And that was uh, tweeted out by Lane Kiffin himself. He used to work at Tennessee before uh, not working at Tennessee. He went to USC afterwards. Right. Um, but Lane Kiffin, as you just noticed, as you pointed out earlier, has a lot of good tweets out there. Highly recommend following him if you aren't already. He's a bit of a troll. He's a huge troll. High profile troll. Which leads me to my question. Is Lane, who in your opinion, if it's not Lane Kiffin, is the best sports personality, whether it be athlete, coach, reporter, uh, on Twitter to follow? For entertainment purposes. For entertainment purposes. You know, I'd have to go with... Um, I was going to go with Lane Kiffin, but since we already used him, I'm going to gonna take a, a side note, and I'm going to go... Shannon Sharp's pretty funny. And he'll... he'll, he'll um, he just kind of comments and actually talks back with uh, people. So I'm going to go Shannon Sharp in lack of a better answer, and I was going to go Lane Kiffin. Um, Can't believe you... Still managed to pick the wrong person. Who, who did I miss? Joel Embiid. Oh, Hashtag that's... trust the process. Who, where, you know what he invented? He, I, I got, it's getting harder and harder as time goes on. He totally invented going to the club in his own uh, jersey. That was fantastic. Genius move. 
I don't know why you wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, Luke, I believe I finally fulfilled Cam Newton's prophecy and have finally sunk the Titanic. That is my playoff life in our fantasy football league. Because he's trash. I suffered a crushing defeat by the now 9-3 Gin and Juice team, who, may I remind you, selected Carson Palmer as our first pick in our draft. Oh, that was her? That was her. Uh, I lost by a devastating 5.4 points, dragged out by the up-and-down performance of the Ravens' defense on Monday night, and punctuated by me starting Danny Woodhead instead of Rex Burkhead or Muhammad Sanu. Just, just devastating. You, meanwhile, scored an impressive 162.7 points on the back of Julio Jones' 50-point uh, performance, his third one of his career. Yep. You did, however, get served the L by Pickle Rick, who scored 169.7. Nice. Literally the only person in our league who scored more than me that week. Luke, whose loss was worse... And with one week to go in the uh, and one week to go, which team do you think will win our league championship? If you had to bet the entire right estate on it. Uh, so first fir- of all, first one. My wor- my loss was way worse for so many reasons. I'd love to hear them. Uh, first of all, I, I was the second highest uh, point scorer in our league. Third was thirty points less than me. I took second by thirty points and still lost. Two, another reason why mine was worse, is I looked through his roster before the week officially started, and I pinpointed four key players, and I was like, as long as they don't go off, I should win. I should get this in the bag. Keenan Allen dropped 40. Hunter Henry dropped 20. Um, and then his kicker Kamara. scored 15. Kamara dropped 40, although I was kind of expecting Yeah, Kamara's been... His defense dropped 15. So I just, every single player that I looked at, I was like, as long as they don't go off, I should be good. And everyone went off just enough for me to lose by five points. To be fair, though, you thought you were out of it until Jones went off for 50 points. No, I thought I had a, a reasonable chance. Because okay. a lot of his players went off on Thursday, and one of my main players that I was worried about was P. Ryan, and he went, he had 16 points. Right. He was my only Thursday player. Right. So I thought I was within... Well, I was close. Spitting distance. Um, uh, I I would argue that mine is since I got knocked out of the playoffs. You're still enshrined been, in there. You've been bad I, all season. But I was in the playoffs. I was the final seed, and now I'm. I need a lot to go my way. Uh, you're but trash. but you have to bet the entire Luke Estate on uh, one team, honestly. So I mean, you're putting every cent you own. Who's winning? Not a lot. Who's, <laughs> uh, be that as it may, you're going to live in a in a cardboard mansion if you get this wrong. Who lives, or I'm sorry, which team wins our league? Probably, I'd say probably Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu, bless you, has Pikachu an impressive starting roster, including uh, Todd Gurley the third and uh, Antonio Brown are the highlights of her team. How does she get, oh yeah, because no one thought Todd Gurley Nobody would be that good. Nobody thought Todd Gurley was going to be that good. So yeah. Turned out to be that she got the new number one wide receiver in Antonio Brown, which arguably yeah, would have been. Was yeah, yeah, it would have been Odell Beckham, Julio Jones, but Antonio Brown's been on. All right, your t- your turn, sir. Okay, so there are a lot of rumors, some rumblings. Oh, some 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 rumor rumor yeah. uh, acorns shuffling down the tree. And it's something across all sports. John Carlos Stanton. Ah. Eli Manning. Ah. Marcus Gasol. Ah. LeBron. Oh, well, maybe not LeBron James. Maybe not LeBron. But the glorious thing about sports is every league always has trades. Every year. There's always some good trades outside the NFL. Although NFL is pretty popular this year, too. Um, it was a good trade deadline yeah. for the NFL. Best one in years. Basketball is going to be lit come trade uh, deadline. Come December 15th, because a lot of these players cannot be traded until December 15th, so look I out think, for that I deadline. think most of them will end up waiting until closer to the deadline. Fair enough. Buyers, sellers, and whatnot. Um, but my question to you, if you can make any one trade in all of professional sports okay. that, while can be a blockbuster that favors one team or another, but let's try to keep it somewhat realistic here. Okay. But if you can make one, any one trade for any teams what would it be and why okay it's the obvious trade but on the same token I don't think people understand how obvious Eli Manning goes to the Denver Broncos 
Just let me let me count. That's what you're using your your one trait. Listen, for? I I had a lot. I had a lot, but I want Speaking wanted... of bias. No, it's not. It's really oh, not. Think of think about the storyline. Both Mannings with Both Mannings go to the Broncos. Both Mannings get that defense Sorry. and and really, what did we what did we have uh, malign Eli Manning for this year? It wasn't that he played bad. It was just that he had no offensive pieces. It was also kind of that that bad. Denver Broncos offense outside of the line. The line's atrocious, but they do have offensive pieces. They do have two stalwart wide receivers. They have a serviceable tight end, and they have a running back committee that, if they had a potent passing attack, could be actually serviceable. Yeah, because Eli Manning's athletic enough to be able to survive how bad that offensive line is. You get a couple <laughs> chip blocks. I mean, you, you can you can work around that, but I'm still saying that he's better than any quarterback we have in our league, and more so just for the storyline, the the Manning 2.0. That would be so great. That is that alone is what I'm banking on. Can, I want that to happen solely for the means of Eli Manning. Revitalizing his career in Denver to win his third Super Bowl to put him over Big Again. Brother Peyton. Oh, it, that, he for fa- that he fa- that means he gets to face uh, Tom Brady. In the <laughs> oh, season. let's do it. There we go. Let's do it. For that exact reason, it will never happen. I think the the same move will happen just in Jacksonville. Get, get on but the phone right now, Elway. Right. Now. Trade all three of our quarterbacks. Give them. They oh, happen oh, to like them. <laughs> I don't care. Give Paxton. We don't need a backup. And Matt give pa- Prater. And give Paxton Lynch to the Buccaneers. Just let him fulfill his destiny. But anyways, so that's that's what I'm gonna waste it on. And again, it's the obvious move, but it's obvious for all the right reasons. Luke, I had a very in-depth question revolving uh, around a serial serious uh, serial killer who was just arrested in Tampa Bay this morning and was caught by asking a coworker of his to hold his gun for a little bit. You know, he took it took it to work at McDonald's and then just the employee was like, yeah, I'm going to call the cops on this one. But, fair, fair. but as I was writing the question, a little, a little heavenly cloud was bestowed upon me. And I saw that the Avengers Infinity War trailer had just dropped. Yep. And upon him further viewing, so did my bowels in an uncontrollable manner. It was, it was, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. Luke, this new film skyrockets to my all-time hyped film that I've ever wanted to watch, just passing The Dark Knight Rises. Again, I'm, I'm not saying that it's the best film ever, just in the anticipation and build-up from the past films to now where I wanted to watch this new film. The Dark Knight was the better film, but I, because of that, I wanted to see The Dark Knight Rises. Avengers Infinity Wars, top one right now. Luke, which is the film that tops your all-time list of films you couldn't wait to see? Either upcoming, still to come, or has happened all time. See, this question's hard for me because I'm not like you and Gary. Like, I enjoy movies. Right. I'm entertained by movies. I swear, if you say a Steven Seagal movie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It, uh, no, it's not a Steven Seagal I, movie. I'm gonna pop now, you right here. I, sh- I should, I should say one just to mess with you. I, I swear. Um, <laughs> but, I think he does have one coming out too. Uh, probably direct to Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Not even direct to DVD anymore. Um, I know direct to Netflix is actually better than. It's, it's true. Direct to DVD is pretty bad. Anyway, um, I I don't really get I get hype for movies, but it's normally just like in tears. Like I don't have like one movie that like blew me away so much compared to other movies. Um, but again, it's it's you're getting excited for it. You're getting hyped, no, I, and you're you're yeah, you know even the but, first tingle of a teaser trailer. You're like, <gasps> is it that day yet? If I had to choose one, probably Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. That was pretty good. Um, just because for me, I I'd grown up as such a big Star Wars fan, and when the when the prequels were coming out, one, they weren't really that good, and two, um, I didn't, I wasn't really into movies that much at all. I had, I hated, like, movie theaters and stuff, so I wasn't really excited for it. So for there to finally be a new Star Wars coming out that I could, like, enjoy and, and get into, and that was probably my number one hype movie. Okay. When I saw that first trailer. And even, I'm, even the new Star Wars commercial that just came out, that's pretty pretty lit, yeah, too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it has been upended by Infinity Wars. If you haven't seen the trailer yet, go see it. Worth every second. Luke. 
Okay, so this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Okay. Carson Wentz. I had a lot. I know a coworker coming into this season. He maintained, and he likes to change his story now that Carson Wentz is a MVP candidate. Right, right. But coming into the season, he would basically say Wentz sucked. He would say, based off of his last 12 games of his rookie year, Wentz had not shown him enough to be impressed. But he said that Wentz sucked. Um, Which was a fairly... It wasn't common, but some people thought. It wasn't out of the He was not alone. Right, right. Lonzo Ball. uh, He's doing very well, I think, in the NBA. He's not scoring. At all. <laughs> At all. But he's still showing the traits that people expected of him when he moved to the NBA. Right. Um, uh, Markel Fultz had bad games, and then finally Philly was like, maybe we should like listen to the doctors. But all of these people had common traits, and it was at one point or another somebody thought that they were or could be a bust. They were all very lauded over draft picks. Paxton Lynch in Denver, everyone calls a bust, even though he's played, I think, maybe five games. In today's sports world, God forbid a rookie play bad and then eventually get better. I know, it's crazy. So my question to you is, at what point do you feel comfortable calling somebody a bust? Um, each sport comes with a different realm. It's kind of like how each, in, within each sport, a coach, you get a different period of time to do well, and it depends on the job that you come into. Um, so let's, it's, I would say if I have to create an all-around sports time, I say you get two solid years of being awful. After that, the third year, I need, I need to see improvement, and depending on where you were drafted, might even need to be massive improvement. And if you think about it, I think that that's around, that's probably the, that's probably the late average of most NBA drafts. I mean, you look at Joel Embiid, wasn't a star until the third, third year. Sort um, of. Well, as I far mean, as a star? Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like it was less of him being bad and more of him just not playing. Well, that comes with both, though. I mean, just because he's not playing doesn't mean that that's still not years in the his, NBA that you can but his, professionally train yourself. It's almost like a yeah, he, a paid internship almost. I mean, he was really just rehabbing. He wasn't Ooh. really getting better on an NBA level. He was just rehabbing a lot. But still getting acclimated. The point is, is that I, I, I give you three point years. Is <laughs> point is, is that Dak Prescott will get this year. They, him and Carson Wentz, exact same same uh, roads, just flipped. Just flipped. Dak had the better first year. Carson had an awful first year. Dak now has an awful second year. Carson has a fantastic second year. We will. It will all mellow out. The average will come out in the third year. We will see what they truly are. I'd, I'd say that neither Carson nor Dak are as bad as they seemed in one year, nor, is they, nor are they as great as they are in their best year. They're somewhere in the middle. And... And for me, I would say Carson Wentz's middle is higher than Dak Prescott's middle. But I would say that that third year is where, if you're not what you're supposed to be, that's when I cut Jamarcus Russell. That's when I cut... Um, I don't know why you yeah, throw, throw Jamarcus Russell on the bus like that. I, he's... he's mm, I almost... Ooh, 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 the Lord saved me from uh, from that one. Uh, but he he would probably... He, he didn't even deserve... Two years. That was just an awful pick. All right. Finally, I believe that was your last one. Yes. Okay, Luke. We have the official results from last week's rights win column, where you you picked the Redskins. Keep track of these. This was a win. I won one. Yeah. Falcons. That was a win. Two for Bengals. Two. That was a win. Three for three. Patriots. That was four a win. For four. Eagles. That was a win. Five for five. Steelers. Six that for was six. a win. And by gosh, by golly, Monday night, you picked the Ravens. Boom. Luke, you got Drop all seven right with the W. Do you dare, and you get the W yeah, before getting all seven right. I know. Do I you, know. so Great. my question for you is, do you dare pick again? Or will you retire the uh, the Elway, the Lewis, the Peyton Manning way by retiring on top? I only have an option. I'm pretty sure you're going to make me... 
No, I'm seriously minute. asking. Do you want to continue this, or do you want to end the streak perfect? I will abide by whatever you you've earned yourself the the graceful exit, or you or you uh, give yourself the Brett Favre uh, well, ungraceful exit. Well, uh, I don't wuss out. Okay. So, so in let's the, go. Let's go. So now you have um, in past weeks you've had a four for seven, and now you are a seven for seven. So all in all, undefeated. Eleven. <laughs> well, not all in all. All in all, you have eleven and fourteen. We will move on with the rest of the week. What do you mean? 11 of 14. 11 of 14, that's correct. Okay. okay. So moving on, I need seven winners here, Luke. Seven winners. Cool. I'm only taking the winners. Who you got straight up for this upcoming week? It's it's a Dude. tougher slate of games. Oh, this is significantly tougher. Yes. Jaguars. Okay, Jaguars are his number one overall pick. Here we go. First one. First of seven. Chargers. Chargers. I can't wait for them to disappoint me. Yeah, the Chargers. It's going to be great. They always flip the script right when you don't realize. Uh, Steelers. Steelers. Dare I say, dare I offer you two points if you guess the uh, the Giants-Raiders game correctly? Raiders. Really? They're, yeah. they're missing their top two wide receivers. They're at home against Geno Smith. Write it down. Raiders, okay. Eagles. Eagles. Rams. Eagles, Rams. I don't even know how many I'm That's at. one, Just two, on three, four, five, six. You owe me one more, sir. One more guaranteed winner. Titans. Titans, who do they face? Uh, Texans at home. Okay. So all in all, in the fast recap, we've got Jaguars, uh, Chargers, Steelers, Raiders, Eagles, Rams, and Titans. Correct. So we will see. If we can, uh, if we can win the viewing public some money if they follow your picks week after week, but like I said, give it three. This is the third session. We'll see right now. This will be the true average of if Luke Wright is more the four and seven or the seven out of seven next week. Either one, over fifty percent. Either either way, no matter what you do, bet evenly on all of his picks and you'll you'll do just fine. Yeah, you'll earn yourself a nice little cushy home. So. Uh, maybe my next time we talk, we'll see whether or not Herm Edwards is officially the ASU coach. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm kind the of hoping no. and praying it's no. It, it's, it's going to be yes. It just because that's yeah. the wrong answer. It's, it's going to be the true answer. Can't wait for Ray Anderson to get fired in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. See, let's. I think the true thing we're gonna have to look at is Herm Edwards' buyout clause. What is that buyout clause? Oh, gonna it's be? gonna be like twenty million. So he's gonna have to screw it out. Yeah, twenty million. No, you have to finagle it, and each time you have to finagle it in such a way to where it's not too much, to where it's not impossible for you to be bought out and get paid for doing nothing, but also it's low enough to where if you're that bad, you don't have to embarrass yourself by staying two extra years that you know Ray he wants. Ray Anderson to. is about to pay Todd Graham twelve million dollars to not do his job. Same anymore. with UCLA and Jim Moore. Yeah. It's Crazy! It's ridiculous. <laughs> and you wonder where someone our, uh, paid me twelve million dollars to not do anything. And they actually get paid less if they get another job. They get their their current yeah. their current salary gets it depends subsidized. Not I it think de- Jim Mora did. Yeah, Todd Graham. Mora maybe. I don't, I don't Todd Graham doesn't. Yeah, so you can, no you can still get another job. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, raise your kids to be coaches, Honestly. head coaches, assistant coaches, be in the NFL. But other than that. All right, so we'll see uh, you guys next week, and uh, hopefully we'll be all the better for it as an ASU nation. And hopefully we don't do this whole 1230 at IHOP thing again. Next week it won't be late night, uh, deep voices. <laughs> great time. Great timing. There we go. But late night we will not be uh, doing deep uh, deep night slow jams and uh 50-50 Christmas carols and 50-50 pop of the 90s. I'm just trying to go to sleep, man. Uh, got we'll wait, work we'll in wait. the morning. Our Facebook Live yeah. is uh, currently slow, so we'll wait for them to sign out trying here. Trying to we'll, reconnect. Right. While we're waiting here, I do want to ask you, since we're at I, I don't even know. Yeah, we did say IHOP. Do you see this advertisement over here? Uh, yes. Is it in a bowl of milk, or is it... Or is it a white table? Because there seems to be a like straw that is sinking into what I want to say is a, a well, pool of milk. Well, that's not a straw, but that's what yarn. What is it? It's yarn. Why is yarn in, in a food advertisement? I don't know, but that's definitely what that is. Oh, because oh, no. it's like wrapping. 
It's supposed to like help wrap. Stuff. Oh, I see it. Yeah. I would so. I would be insulted if I got that present with like holly wrapped on them. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know why. Just give me the that. give me the new iPhone and first of all, yeah. Why are you even wrapping the gift? Just give me the money. That is so true. We have we have gone so far that I I hear more and more people just want money. Yeah, I got bills to pay, fam. <laughs> bills to pay. That ten dollar sweater that I'm never gonna wear because I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Better come with a receipt. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, there we go. Okay, so for Luke Wright, I'm Philip Amarin. Thank you so much for listening to us. To listen to this episode as well as past episodes, go to and visit our YouTube channel. It's updated. Chopped Greens. A search for Chopped Greens in the search bar. You will find this as well of all as well as all of our old archived episodes. Thank you so much for listening for tonight. We'll see you next week at a much earlier time. Much earlier. Much earlier time at a probably hopefully a house. See you next time.